Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here. Got the whole family with me. Hey, hey y'all. And in today's video, we're going to be looking in the third testament of the Bible in chapter 33, talking about the nature and the duty of the man. Right. This is part of a revelation that our Father has given Stacy and I at, um, with respect to our marriages and um, our duties within these marriages. Right. And I'm going to tell you now, for those who already know this information, we're going to sound real silly, ain't we, Stacey? Like this is something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's new to us. Yeah. But I'm sure there's many people who are already aware of what we're going to say. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's why we brought the children in, the kids, mm -hmm. you know, because maybe there's some other families that don't have this information that we're going to share. Right. Okay. So who in here could tell me about the birds and the bees? Mm, me. <laughs> Darren who, might know about. Who can tell me about the, the flowers and the trees? We're going to talk about what happens beyond that point, though. Okay. Not necessarily where babies come from, but the emotions, the spirits, the all of the other stuff that goes with this procreation process. Mm hmm particularly the areas that we're messing up in. Right. The areas we're coming short in. Right, Stacey, you want, to, you want to tell them what I'm talking about before we get into the verses? Yeah, just a little bit. Um, I guess it's basically how we treat each other. Mm -hmm. And so if our behaviors are, as the Messiah um, told us it should be, treating each other as we would have ourselves to be treated, um, then things would go well. But when we... Uh, sway off of that then um, someone could be messed up for life yeah. and generations yeah talking particularly about women right you know we're talking about the responsibilities or the duties of the man but these duties like what Stacy said if they're not done correctly if we're irresponsible with these duties we could ruin people's lives particularly the women we could right. ruin their lives um, and this was given to me as a revelation um, actually over years and years we've been talking and thinking along this line but it was this morning that our father in heaven hallowed be his name gave the scripture to Stacy to actually back up what we're what we've been thinking yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so let's start here at 17 um, the verses we're really interested in is closer down into I believe verse 20 it's mm -hmm. the ones we talked about right. but just to um, See if there's, you know, maybe some more information in it. Let's start at the beginning of this section, which is the nature and duty of the man. Verse 17. To you, men, I have granted a heritage, a treasure, a woman of whom you are the overseers in order to love and preserve her. And nevertheless, your companion has come to present her complaints and tears to me because of your lack of understanding. Yeah. So the men, we were told in the beginning that we would have the rule over the woman. Right. So that's what it's talking about when he say overseers, right? Mm -hmm. and, right. So we have, what does it say? To love and preserve her was our duty as men. Mm -hmm. But here in these times, especially during these time of turmoil and retribution, we have these companions, our wives, what does it say? Are complaining. With tears saying that they're not being understood. Right. And we've all heard these complaints, right? Right. Well, in this video, we're going to kind of dig down into this. As to why she's complaining and why she's being felt misunderstood. Right. We, we know there's a um, something going on there. Instead of putting a Band-Aid on it and telling her to deal with it. In this video, we're actually going to try to clean it up a little bit and try to get down to the to where we can actually see the real problem and then we can take care of it, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. So let's try to get down to verse 20, but let's look at verse 18. I have said that you are strong, that you have been created in my image and likeness, but I have not sent you to humiliate the woman and make her your slave. Talking about the man, right? And he's also talking about how we think about you know, in the cartoons or whatever, where the man goes in and hits the woman in the head with the club, drags her back, and basically makes her clean the house and, and take care of the kids or whatever. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are the days of the Flintstones. <laughs> yeah, but some could argue those are the days now when we start to think about how if we aren't taking care of the women once we have them back at home, even now today, that could be the case if she's not getting um, the necessary support. Right. And so that's what that's what we're digging down into. What is this support that's missing? Mm-hmm. All right, so let's go on to 19. I have given you strength so that you may represent me in your home, strong in virtue and talent. And I have given you a woman as a companion and as a complement in your earthly life so that you may find fortitude to withstand the ordeals and vicissitudes through the love of both. Yeah, so you have to remember that Adam was separated into two different people. And so that's why you now have to have this companionship. You have to put them back together to have the complete package. Otherwise, you don't have a companion. It's sort of like when you would say, Without the woman being by the man's side, he can be sort of hard and not have that compassion. Yeah. But with her, he is, you know, respectfully a little softer in the way that he uh, go about doing things. Okay, but again, she's complaining, right? right? She's not understood. There's something going on there. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's get down to verse 20. Think, men, how many times you have made virtuous women fall into your net finding in them sensitive and weak spots and those mirrors formerly clean and now without luster you must make them reflect once again the clarity and beauty of their spirit so herein lies the gist of this story everything pretty much we're talking about wrapped up here Mm -hmm. because what does it say here we have removed the luster from these women right how many times have men gone on and taking advantage of these otherwise virtuous girls pushing and manipulating these sensitive weak spots and what do we do we scuff them up according to this verse taking away the luster and then what does it say you must make them reflect once again the clarity and beauty of their spirits now notice this word must here now see Boys, you guys are kind of quiet because you aren't guilty of this as I am. But I did bring you in because you want to be aware of this so you never make these kinds of mistakes. But you do understand what we're talking about or what the scripture is saying now. Once this luster has been removed, you got to put it back. Mm -hmm. We got to put it back. But notice it says them instead of her. Go on to verse 21, Seth. Why do you today deprecate the same that yesterday you induced to perdition? Why do you complain of the degeneration of women? Understand that if you had led them on the path of my law, which is the law of the heart and the conscience of respect and charity, loving them with a love that elevates instead of the passion that degrades, you would not now have reason to cry and complain and they would not have fallen. This is not along the path of what we're talking about here, but it's important, Mm -hmm. right? Because this is saying that no matter the situation that we're in, whether we've, you know, gotten rid of this luster or not, if we had led them along the path of the law, things would have been okay. Right. Right. I mean, that's what it's really all about. But instead of leading her to the law, being a true able, Mm -hmm. we denigrated her. So we've removed the luster, taught her to transgress the law, taught her that it was okay to transgress the law. And now that she has fallen into sin, you come the denigration. Hmm. In the la- and that's where the lack of understanding comes from because nobody really knows that this is all going on. Well, yeah, being ignorant of it because um, th- things such as this are not talked about. Just you ain't never heard of it, yeah. yeah <laughs> we ain't never experience. heard this. You know, my mom never talked to me about it, and um, 
you know, none of my friends are has ever, you know, hinted around that their parents did. And so, um, you know, we was talking about this morning how uh, when you go into school, you're made accessible to all these things where the woman is being denigrated. Yeah. And it's, it's through ignorance from the young men because they don't know. Yeah, and also the women, too. You right. know, they're yeah. picking on each other, too, helping yeah. them in the situations. Yeah. But... It's the man that we're talking about here and like, you know, talking about this humiliation part. So right. let's let's look at verse 22. Men seek and demand that women have virtues and beauty. Why do you demand what you do not deserve? Backing up again, you know, saying earlier, we didn't teach her the law. Right. You know, so how can we now demand these virtues and this beauty if we haven't led her in that direction so far? Right. And if we started off. Um, you know, basically mustering her up. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, we kind of went downhill from there. I see that you still believe yourselves to have great merits in spite of falling short in them. Reconstruct with your works, words, and thoughts that you have destroyed, giving honesty, morals, and virtues the value that is theirs. But notice there where it says reconstruct with your works, words, and thoughts that what you have destroyed given honesty morals and virtue so in other words we have to undo what's been done mm -hmm. right and that's understandable right you know we, when we're talking about the law yeah right it's real easy to understand that if we've taught her to you know but anyway let's go on if you strive in this way men you will have helped the messiah and his work of salvation and your hearts will feel joy when you contemplate the homes honored by good wives and worthy mothers. Your happiness will be great when you see virtue return to those who had lost it. Yeah. So he's basically saying that we have done this, but if we can reconstruct and get back on path, all of our work and our effort, even our pain and our turmoil will be worth it as we see them regain this virtue. But it's going to take work on the man's part because you know, like he said he got to reconstruct this we tore it down you got to rebuild it and i want to get more in the specifics of how we actually tore it down mm -hmm. you know but the scriptures are leading towards rebuilding it so let's go on. redemption is for everyone why should not even the most sinful be saved for that reason i tell you men work with me to save those who you have led to perdition encouraging them with the light of my doctrine and make my loving thoughts come to their minds and hearts. Bring them my message in the hospitals and prisons, even in the places of mire. For it is there that they cry in repentance and pain for not having been strong when the world with its temptations dragged them toward perversion. Yeah, so you can imagine how many um, single women are out there in the sinful cities having been abandoned by their man, okay. abandoned by the, the men who took away their luster in the first place and even maybe even taught them to be sinful, mm. you know, because boys, you know, we're a little bit more adventurous than girls and we'll, you know, do things that y'all wouldn't normally do. Right. So we may have encouraged her in that manner and then left her in downtown mm. for her to figure it all out by herself. And that's what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how this is this is done. But we'll sum it up at the end. Let's, let's go on to verse 26. Every woman was once a little girl. Every woman was once a virgin. And so you can reach their hearts on the path of sensitivity. Now, see, here we're getting along the lines of what we're actually talking about. A woman and her virginity. Mm -hmm. Right? Because this is actually how you humiliate the woman in the first place. This is what it's talking about back there in the first verses that we mentioned. That we remove this luster. Right. By using these sensitive spots and these weak areas that she has, the man just like I said came in and tricked her, basically with the 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 uh, false promise that it was gonna be with her forever, mm -hmm. and basically removed this luster, took away her shine, taught her to be a little bit more sinful, and then left her in the street, so to speak. You know, for her to fend for herself as he moved on or she or she moved on, could have moved on, too, as they parted ways to, to explore somebody else. Now it's saying that she now has this to deal with. The man, it doesn't necessarily he has the problem to solve, but the problem is not him, it's her. 
Right. Because she's the one who's now suffering from all of this that's going on. Yeah. And see, they, they never really taught us this. Right. You know, they taught us that men and women were equal. Yeah. You know, and so we're, we're there, you know, in, in the classroom together. You're making better grades than me. Uh, you know, there's different um, sports in school that you being a female will beat me at. Mm -hmm. You know, I may be able to beat you at basketball, but what about track? You know, and so we're equal. Mm -hmm. And then we come together and all of a sudden I find interest in you or you find interest in me. And like you say, there's this um, assumption of a commitment before she allows him or maybe she, we have before she allows him to get close enough to these buttons mm -hmm. that he now pushes and manipulates to get her to. I don't want the man to sound too guilty, but this is about the man's act because he deflowers her in that moment, right. which is a natural process. If they were the only people on the earth, there would be no problem because they, you know, be together and, you know, but what then happens is they're not equal anymore. Because he has taken her flower, he has now taken on her as his responsibility. He has now to do what this scripture is talking about. You know, that's why you have these marriage vows and these consummation of marriage. Because everybody needs to know that this man has now taken on the responsibility of this woman. Right. He is hers now. Yeah. Or... She is his now. Right. Well, same thing. Mm -hmm. But he has the responsibility of leading him on the path of the law. And like we said, if this had been done, everything else would have fell into place naturally. Mm -hmm. You know? But they never taught us this. Right. And so we have this going on today. People, men are still hitting the woman in the head with a club. I'm dragging it back to their place. Right? All right, so let's go on. To the men who have not tarnished these virtues, I will entrust this task. Remember that I have told you, by your works, you shall be known. Let the Spirit speak through the material form. See, now he's talking about you three, you boys. You guys who have never made this mistake. He's got a special task for you. 28. However... To those who have not known how to respect the graces deposited by me in that being, I tell you, what say that you love when it is not love that you feel? Why try to make others fall, letting nothing stop you? Think, what would your heart feel if what you do with those plucked flowers were done with your mother, your sister, or with a woman you love and therefore respect? Have you ever thought of the wounds you caused to the parents who raised their daughters with great love? Yeah. So through ignorance, we have done these to these daughters. Right. Gone in. And, and and I don't I don't want to imply that we forced this upon her. Right, absolutely. The, the, and, and, and I don't want to imply that marriage is wrong or we shouldn't be you know looking for these relationships or you should be somehow scared to, to yeah. talk to somebody or you know because this is going to happen mm -hmm. what we're talking about is what happens after the birds and the bees yeah you know even out of ignorance of not being taught this you know that there's still the consequence of these daughters sisters um being dealt with in this way and so though we did not know or though you know the man did not know um he still has to go back and make these this reconciliation um so that her dignity and her worth does come back to her yeah and that's what he's building up too he's basically asking him don't you think you're gonna have to pay some of this back there in verse 28 when it said have you ever thought what if this happened to your own daughter or something like that it reminds us of the story of dinah right yeah yeah all right what's about verse 29 ask your heart in a true examination in the light of your conscience if you can reap what you have not sown okay so can we get this virtuous woman that we have not created 
Right. We created the opposite, mm -hmm. you know, but can we now do this? Can right. we now? All right, let's look at 30. How can you prepare your future life if you are wounding your fellow men and women? How many victims will you have? What ending will you have? Truly, I tell you that you have sacrificed many victims to the whirlwind of your passions, some of whom belong to your present and others to your past. So this is even bringing in the past relationships. Right. You know, not just the present one, but like I said, it's going all the way back to day one. Right. When we, you know, got involved in this process mm -hmm. of, you know, procreation process. I desire that your heart and lips that have been a nest of perfidy and lies become a nest of truth and chase love. Reconstruction. So we got to fix the problem and remembering what it was. You know, yes, we took the, the, the um, luster away and he says we got to shine that back. But it's leading her to the law, right. you know, that's going to do that. Yeah. You know, because, you know, not much else we can do, but that's what it's saying to do now. Yeah, it's kind of very hard for you, say, if you uh, is in this situation, for you to go and try to uh, reconstruct people that you have been in a past relationship 10 or 20 years ago. For one, they married, mm -hmm. you know, the husband ain't gonna, you know, mm -hmm. allow that. Mm -hmm. and they have children and they have other lives. Mm -hmm. So now he's saying the best way to do it, which, you know, is the way that you would think the father would say, is to do it through the law. Yeah. And By so, teaching her. Yeah. yeah. By, and right. Yeah. 32. Illuminate the path of others by word and example so that you may know by the saviors of fallen women. Oh, if only each of you would redeem just one. Yeah. So he's saying we've done this in the past. And like Stacy said, you can't go back and, you know, start trying to fix on that kind of stuff. Right. But he said now if you can just redeem just one. Right. You know, and he mentioned these women out in these fallen cities. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how many opportunities there are. That's what it's talking about here when you say just redeem just one. It could be your wife. Right. But he's saying if one woman were to regain this virtue, and like we said earlier, that's going to be a reward. That's, right. you know, the blessing from having coming through all of that. Right. 33. Do not speak badly of that woman. The offensive word that wounds one wounds all who hear it. Because from that instant, all become unfit judges. So you understand when you break the law, you go through the spirit of jealousy, which makes her feel as though she's been treated as a woman who's committed adultery and so it comes with all aspect of the word including what it says speaking badly of her but you got to understand the state that she's in is not the real problem the the problem is the overall picture once she gains this law once she gains this virtue back there will be nothing to say about it right. but if you've already said it those that heard it are now wounded so in other words, the, you see the women down on the street, you go downtown Seattle, you know, don't say nothing, you know, All right. because there's really nothing to say. It's, we got to remember that it's our fault, is what it's trying to say here. We did it. Men did it. We did it. And and one of you looked up at me, you just said I didn't. Well, you got to think of your past lives too. You know, you may not have been in such a situation in a past life. In a past life, you may have had the opportunity to get out there and, and do some of the stuff we're talking about. Even in a school situation gives you that. Y'all guys were homeschooled. And that's probably the number one reason why you right. haven't made this mistake is because right. you were homeschooled. Right. And you wasn't given the opportunities. Respect the actions and secrets of others. For it is not for you to judge them. I prefer to raise men fallen in sin over hypocrites who appear pure but sin. I prefer a sincere great sinner to the false pretense of virtue. If you wish to adorn yourselves, let it be with adornments of sincerity. So never mind the actions of the past is what, what I'm hearing here. Mm -hmm. You know, just worry about the going forward, the fixing of the problem from now on. Because right. you got to remember some of these women are and have been into prostitution. Yeah. You know, but so what? Mary Magdalene is going to be in heaven. Yeah. 
You know, it's because her virtue was restored. The Messiah had a lot to do with that. You know, and so that's a, an example of what we're talking about here when we talk about these fallen women. And also, you think of uh, Rahab, who um, yeah, she was, was also a, a prostitute, prostitute, but yet and still she was given the honor to be part of the Messiah's lineage. Yeah, right. You know, so even that Rahab could, and Mary Magdalene could be um, one of the stars up there twinkling down at us, shining light on us. Let's go on. If you find a virtuous woman of high sentiment and you feel unworthy of her, although you love her, and then speak badly of her and deprecate her, and if after suffering and understanding your error, you seek her for consolation, in vain will you call at her door. Yeah, so once she's in this state, you know, she's already in this fallen, broken state, and then what is up there, revealing secrets and slanders involved and all of that and deprecation is involved. This breaks this woman is what we're talk talking about. It breaks her spirit in a way that what it say you're going to be in vain when you actually go back and try to talk to her. Right. And verse 36. If every woman who has passed through the life of a single man had received from him the word and the feelings of love, respect and understanding your world would not now be at the height of sin in which it finds itself. See, this is why the children lead us in. Because you have the opportunity to know what he's talking about here. Yeah, I sort of, um, you know, I mean, just thinking about it, we were having a discussion um, a couple of days, weeks earlier about, you know, why so much talk is being done about why the women, woman is taking on more of a masculine um, uh, role yeah. in life. Yeah. And this could very well be some of the reason. Yeah, because, you know, we'll go ahead and talk about that as, you know, we close this video out. What's happening is we are pushing these women to be more masculine as we humble them and humiliate them. You got to think, the woman is there in our class equal with us. The little girl is there. Now, we've humbled her whatever happens we separate she has is still a humble person for one she has this desire for the man that wasn't there before mm -hmm. and so that plays a huge part in it because i would think that will make her make it hard for her to live her life if he's doing something else mm -hmm. you know if he goes off to college or goes off to the military mm -hmm. you know would her life be the same there now without him? Right. Or if she had never been with him? Yeah. Right. So she's in a humbled state anyway, mm -hmm. but now he doesn't plan to come back from the military. What does she do now? Yeah. She now has to go. She has to now build herself up, first of all. Yeah. And then go, go through the whole process, maybe even again in the same way. Mm -hmm. So she has this in her mind that, She's been left before. Right. The marriage or the relationship didn't work before. She's been humiliated. She's got to bring herself up. And so now she meets the next guy. And this is already playing a part in the relationship. And if this goes on several times, then you can imagine um, the result of who she is now. She doesn't want to give in. She doesn't want to submit. She doesn't want to be a... She doesn't want to be humbled anymore. Right. And so that's taken away a lot of who the wife is supposed to be. Right. And so that's why you have a lot of what's going in, on in the world as these women say, no, I'm not going to get in this state. I'm going to empower mm -hmm. myself to not be humiliated anymore. We were never taught what to do with this flower once we got it. And so just like if I was to give you a flower in your hand, literally right now, if I come back 15 minutes from now, you would have laid it down. And if I come back tomorrow, you're not going to know where it's at because you don't know what I gave you. And that's what it was. And that's what we're doing as men. We're not understanding what it means to take a woman, to have a woman, to make a woman your wife, to actually go on and to take a virgin is a very very big deal right. of huge responsibility yeah. you know this is some of the first you know i was telling you how uh, i believe this information came from the angels because this stuff i've never heard before but it just makes so much sense yeah we're putting our boys and our young girls out there and 
we're, we're basically just messing them up. Yeah, because you got to think, a lot of the culture will tell the girl, don't just stay with one guy. Don't just stay with the first guy you, you meet, you know. Yeah, well, my mom, I, you know, she instilled that, you know, to us as children, as you know, girls, you know, have all you have all the boyfriends, she would say, that you want. Just don't get married. And that was, you know, because I guess she considered her marriage bad. bad. But just think of all the all the ways that we could have been messed up yeah. if we had took and adhered to her advice. Yeah, and my parents might have said similar stuff. So I'm wondering if it wasn't that generation right. yeah. that, yeah, mm -hmm. kind of taught us to be more promiscuous, yeah. you know, than we would have been otherwise. Um. So with that, guys, we're going to close this video out. We're going to talk more about it in the next video because, like we said, those are where the actual verses are that talk about helping the woman get her flower back right. and what that all means. So if you got anything out of this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment out of the way, and I'll see you in the comment section. And make sure you guys share this video because this is this, this is very important information that we need to have not only for ourselves but, our, you know, to pass on to our children. Right. All right, see you next time. Shalom. Shalom.